recording? We're recording. Question is volume. Okay. 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 Good evening, Eretz So, uh, interesting halachic topic which comes up in this week's parsha. We'll talk a little bit about Sar Balei Chayim, which is the uh, yeah, you should, is a prohibition not to not to cause uh, pain or suffering, or just say unnecessary pain or suffering to animals. And one of the sources we learn it from this big discussion in the Gemara and later in the Rishonim and Achronim, whether Tzar Balei Chayim is something which is Midoraita or Midrabanan, the simple reading of many of the Sogyas and the consensus of most of the Puskim is that this is a concept which we have Midrabanan. This is a mitzvah, uh, sorry, Doraita. This is a mitzvah which is, which is Doraita from the Torah. It's interesting, the Radbaz has a tshuva, but he has a very strange language. He says that, that uh, Tzar Balei Chayim, even though it is Midoraita, even though it's from the Torah, he says, Ein bolo ase, bolo love. He says it does not have a, it's not a positive mitzvah, it's not a negative mitzvah, but it is midoraita. You ask if it's not a positive mitzvah and it's not a negative mitzvah, what's left? How can it be midoraita? So hopefully by the end, we will we'll try and answer that question. But the first thing, so where do we, where do we find it? Nowhere in the Torah do we have a pasuk that says, Lo that, that we don't have. We don't have an explicit command about it. So the Rishonim, offer different uh, explanations, different suggestions as to what is the source in the Torah, according to their opinion that that Tzar Balei Chaim is Midoraita. Again, it emerges from, from the Gemara in a couple of different places that, that are probably from the Torah. So one of the sources is in this week's parasha. We have, we find by Balak and Bilam. So Bilam is uh, going with his, uh, with his donkey right, on the way to, or well, so he thinks, to curse Am Yisrael. Actually, for those that are not far from here, near, near my house, next to those who know, between Rehov Metudela and Rehov Aza, there's this narrow uh, sort of alleyway, which is actually called Mishol HaTon Shel Bilam. Right? It's called the, uh, the, the, the alleyway of, of Bilam's donkey. I don't think this is where the original story actually took place, but uh, you have this very narrow uh, place, and that's what it's called. There's a picture of a donkey there. Apparently, this is where the uh, donkey drivers of, in Jerusalem used to come for their, uh, for their test. So that, that's what the sign that's up there next to it says anyway. Um, but uh, so Bilam's going along and he's on a very narrow path and the donkey refuses to move. He doesn't know. Instead of asking the question, why aren't you moving? What's going on? Right? There's, a, there, there's an angel, there's a malach there. He starts hitting the donkey and he's rebuked for that. Says, says the Torah, and so we have, there is a Midrash, Midrash Hagadol, which says this is the source for the uh, prohibition of Tzar Balei Chaim. The Rambam Right as well, in Morena Vuchim, he says the source in the Torah, he says, Tzav Balei Chaim is the writer, and the source for it is from the story of Bilam and his donkey. Okay, interesting that the Rambam writes that in, that's in Morena Vuchim, which is not the Mishnah Torah, which is not his uh, halachic work. And the truth is, we have other places where certain individuals were commanded, or certain individuals in the Torah fulfilled the mitzvot. So, for example, Adam Marishon and Noah are commanded Pruurvu, right? Um, Abraham is given the command of Brit Milah. Right? Yaakov, we have the Gidan Hashem. The Rambam writes in Echot Yisodei Torah that all those mitzvot, we, don't, we are not obligated in them because Abraham was, was obligated in all. Yaakov was obligated. We are obligated because later on we came out of Sinai and we received the Torah and that's where we entered into the Brit and that's where Kaddish Baruch gave us all these uh, obligations and mitzvot. So it seems strange to derive it from the fact that this is something which happened with Bilam, and maybe it's related to, uh, to, to, to what the Radbaz was saying as well. But that, that's one source. Where else could there be a potential source for this idea of Tzav Alei Chaim? So what many of the poskim point out is that although we don't have a specific mitzvah in the Torah of, you know, in this language, of not causing unnecessary suffering to animals, but we have a number of different mitzvot which are included in the Tariag, which seem to uh, seem to stem from this principle, seem to be related to this idea of Tzar Balei Chaim. So, and there are many different examples. So we have, for example, it says, Lo shol shol, that you should not muzzle uh, an ox when it is threshing. That is, there are those who say that is related to this idea of Tzar Balei Chaim. Lo yachdav, that you cannot plow with an ox and a donkey together. Right? I was learning the Sechem Makot. We had, a, we had a Mishnah recently discussing, discussing this idea. Um, mentioned on Shabbat the prohibition of slaughtering an animal and its offspring on the same day 
Again, that may, may also be related to it. There are those who say that actually shita, that the, the you know, that shita is allowed, um, obviously to, to eat meat, but it's done in such a way that uh, there are Rishonim who write that the reason for the, the, the method of shita, part of the reason is because it minimizes the suffering of the animal. And there are those who say that uh, we, we have the mitzvah of right, to follow in the ways of, in the ways of Hashem, mahu rachum, just as he is merciful, so we should be merciful. And just as he's merciful on different creations, merciful with the animals, so, so we should be as well. And uh, there's another mitzvah which comes up from, from Kriyachma, where it says, I'll give you grass in the field for your animals, right? And then you'll eat and be satisfied. So we have an obligation to feed the animals first, and only then we, we come along and eat. So that is. There are those who say from there as well, that is somewhere where we see, uh, see this idea of not leaving the animals uh, going hungry. By the way, you know, if you have pets, or you have animals, so this is a responsibility. You've got to feed them first before you go in and, uh, and eat. The heart Tzvi, Tzvi Pesach Frank has a tshuva. He says, does this idea of feeding the animals first, is it related to just to food or also to drink? So he says it's only food and he says drinking would be different. One of the reasons is because when you sit down to eat you sit down to have a meal right we're worried that a person's going to sit there. you say oh, i'll feed i'll feed the animals soon right? you sit down and you eat the first course the second course whatever it is you start talking you get you get uh, drawn uh, you know we have that achot also when it comes to uh, certain times of the day when we have a mitzvah that we have to fulfill we say we don't start a fixed meal you know half an hour before because you might uh, once you start your meal you might forget about other things and you might be drawn but if a person has a drink you'll just drink and then afterwards you can go and you'll feed the animals. So he says, he says that uh, would only apply by eating, not necessarily by drinking. But okay, so these are some of the different, these are some of the different mitzvot that we have. And it's interesting. So, so uh, the, the Rishonim say, and again, the, the Gemara seems to indicate one of the sources, there is a whole, uh, the Sugya Baba Metzia, where it talks about Prikavatina, where you have a, a donkey that's buckling under, un, under its load, not yours. Somebody you see, it's your friend, it's your enemy's donkey might be, but you have to go and you have to go and help them. One of the reasons is because the Gemara is a discussion, is it says it probably it may be the writer. Another place where it comes up, Shabbat. Shabbat says if an animal fell into Amatamaim, it fell in and it can't, uh, it can't get out, and this is on Shabbat. So the Gemara has two suggestions. Of what you could do, you can't you, you can't pick it up. So it has two suggestions what you can do. One is again, you couldn't pick it up, it's, it's on Shabbat, it would be a problem. So one is that you can you can uh, give it food where it is in order, and then afterwards, when you're able to, after Shabbat, you can come and lift it up. Another suggestion is that you can uh, put down karimuk satot, pillows and things that you put down into where the animal fell, so that it will be able to, to climb back up. And then says the Gemara over there, that is a problem. If you're going to throw these uh, vessels down, that's what's called mevatel kli that you're not going to be able to use it anymore. And it's a, it's a, it would be an iso drabanan. And says the Gemara, that's an iso drabanan, but saba chayim is iso doraita, and therefore you can, uh, and therefore you can do it. So lots of different sources say, suggesting that it is, that it is doraita. Again, lots of different individual mitzvot that we have, but where do we learn the general principle? It's interesting, this is not one of the, in and of itself, one of the Tariq mitzvot. So, so uh, one other place as well, by the way, where this comes up is when it comes to milking cows or milking animals. Right? We're not allowed to milk an animal on a Shabbat. That would be an Isul or an Isul Doraita of, of Dash. But it's very, very painful for the cow not to be, not to be milked for the entire 24 hour period. That is the Tzav So there's different ways in which it would be, in which it would be permitted where it's not the usual way and therefore, it's not an Isoda writer, um, either where it is uh, the milking is done in such a way that the milk goes to waste, or it's done by a non Jew. Or nowadays, in the uh, religious kibbutzim, etc., they have mechanical, they have, uh, they have uh, machinery where, where, whereby it's done, technological solutions. Um, I heard a story today, by the way, just talking about, but, but, but part, part of the reason is because there's an issue, issue of Tabale Chaim, and therefore we can't, just, we can't just leave it. I heard a story today that when they founded Futat Yavne, so uh once you know the story so so uh they noticed that uh, on shabbat shabbat morning there was uh on one of the nearby hilltops there was a truck 
that came and a bunch of people got off and they, uh, you know, they came in, don't worry, it's not, a, it's not a terrorist attack, but a bunch of people came, they got off the truck and then uh, later on Shabbat, they, the truck came back and took them away. And this was happening week after week. And they started to wonder what, what, what was going on, where was this coming from? So it turned out that uh, Yavne was the only of the, there were different kibbutzim in the area and that was the only religious kibbutz. All the other kibbutzim were, were uh, chimini, were secular. And uh, they heard there was a rumor that began to spread that in the area there was a certain kibbutz that was that, that was uh, dati, and that was Shamer, Sh- Shamer Shabbat. And people didn't believe it. They thought you're gonna, you've got the kibbutz going, you've got the agriculture, you've got everything going, you know, seven days a week. You can't uh, stop, you know, nature doesn't wait for, doesn't wait for anybody. They said, it's impossible. There's gonna be, there's a kibbutz here that's one day a week that's not, uh, not doing anything. They're like resting from the field. It can't be. They said, we're gonna go, we're gonna catch them. So this truck would come every Shabbat and they would go to, uh, and they would hide out and they would watch, waiting to see that they were actually being uh, a Shabbat. Anyways, they, uh, but the, the, that just goes straight. There's certain things that it seems that, you know, it seems impossible. You stop for, you, you stop for Shabbat. You're not, you're not going to milk the cows. You're not going to work the field, whatever it is. But that was, uh, anyway, that, 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 that was the story. But maybe the, the answer, just going back to the Radbaz and how he said that we have the Sar Balei Chayim, which is the writer, but it's not a mitzvah to say, and it's not a, and it's not a mitzvah to so I ask you, what's left? So Rav Ashavai talks about this in a couple of places. He has an idea, which I think fits in very nicely to all of what we've said. He says that sometimes, you know, we have the 613 mitzvot. We know that uh, different Rishonim wrote to the Rambam, wrote his Sefer mitzvot, the Ramban, and his, his comments said which of those mitzvot he thought the Rambam got wrong, which ones he shouldn't have included, which ones he, which ones he forgot. Uh, you have the Smak and the Smag and Sefer Yireh and Sefer Achinach, all different, different Rishonim count the 613 mitzvot differently. But each one who comes and counts them differently because they have different systems in terms of different ways of counting what goes in and what doesn't go in. It's not necessarily that they disagree that all these things need to be performed or need to be observed, right? Everybody will agree that there are certain things which the Torah tells us that we have to do or that, that the Torah wants us to uh, obligate us really to fulfill, but they don't fit for whatever reason, don't fit into the category of one of the 613 mitzvahs. Vashavai says sometimes we have a we have a concept where he calls Ratsonaton. This is what the Torah wants from us. Maybe it doesn't fit neatly into any one of the categories, but obviously it's something, and we can see from the from the Torah, this is what we what we're meant to perform. So for example, he says, uh, you know, it's very famous that the Rambam didn't include Mitzvah Yeshuv Eretz Israel as one of the Tariag. Much ink has been spilt on this. Why doesn't the Rambam include the mitzvah to live in Eretz Israel as one of his 630? One of them, and if you go through the Rambam and you look through the Mishnah Torah, it seems very clear that the Rambam thought that it was definitely a good thing and it's something that you, sh- you should be living in Eretz Yisrael. Why did he not count it as one of the Tariyach? So many different explanations are given. But if we say it's something that doesn't, again, fit into one of those categories, but it's part of Ritzona Torah, or he says, what about Tfilah? The famous Machlok between the Rambam and the Ramban as to whether the Torah, there is a mitzvah, mitzvah to say, midoraita, to pray every day, according to the Rambam, yes. According to the Ramban, there is not. Says Rav Do you think that the Ramban expected that from the from the on a Torah level, you know, Torah doesn't want us to daven, Torah doesn't want us to pray. So sometimes there are things he talks about mitzvah chinuch and other things as well. So he says maybe we could suggest that when it comes to, and this is why we don't have a specific mitzvah, why we can learn it from a story. I don't have time today, but I'll, I'll explain tomorrow why this is deeply connected to Barak and Bira. But why is it that maybe when what he means to say, the Rabbaz says it's not a specific assay, it's not a specific love, it's not necessarily one of the 613 specific mitzvot, but it's Ratzona Torah, it's the covenant of the Torah that we should not uh, uh, inflict pain and suffering on animals where it is not necessary. Okay, many different practical issues and questions which come up, come, come out of this. When is it necessary? What is considered uh, a justified need or not? We'll talk about some of those specific examples tomorrow. Rabbi Hanania ben Akasha, Maris Akash Bachel, Zakot Yisrael, Fichach Balem Tom, Mitzvot, Shnei Madrech, Vitzman Sipko, Yagdil Taravi